everyone. This is Professor Smith, and here's a little video to accompany the aggregate expenditures file that you guys have on Blackboard. So notice how at the top you have some information about what we call the consumption function for this economy. 20, that's the autonomous consumption, plus the marginal propensity to consume of 0.9 times disposable income. Now what you're given here is that taxes are 20% of income. You're given a certain I plus G plus exports, and you're given a certain amount uh, for imports, 20% of after-tax income. Okay, now here's how you interpret this crazy-looking table. You're given six possible levels of GDP, and we want to figure out which is going to be the actual level of GDP in this economy. Let's take a look at the first row. GDP is given as 300. We know that taxes are 20% of that, so take 20% times 300 gives you 60. Okay, let's take a look at the next row. GDP, which is also income or output, remember you can think of those interchangeably, is 400. Taxes are 20% of that, okay, so 20% times 400 gives you 80, all right, so on and so forth. Now, Keynes, who came up with this model, and who's one of the economists we learned about in this chapter, believed that disposable or after-tax income is the key driver of consumption. So that's literally just income minus taxes. Okay, let's take a look at this formula. In the first row, income was 300. Subtract off your taxes of 60. Gives you disposable income of 240. Now, for consumption, all I did here was calculate consumption given the amount of income I have in that row, and using the equation for the consumption function. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Autonomous consumption is our 20 plus the MPC times the corresponding amount of disposable income. Notice how it matches the functional form listed up here. Okay. So do that for every single row. Now what we call aggregate expenditures also includes investment plus government spending plus exports. Now to keep it simple, this is just given to us as 200. So all I did here was simply bring down that 200 and pop it in every row. Now imports are a special form of consumption. So they're also a percent of income, okay? So in this example, imports are simply 20% of after-tax income. So let's look at the formula. 20% times the corresponding after-tax income for that row. Again, just keep following that pattern. Let's take a look at the next one. 20% times my corresponding level of after-tax income gives me a different amount. <clears throat> now remember, you subtract out imports from spending. Remember back to GDP. Okay, so all I did here, took the consumption that you calculated, added the IG and EX that you were given, and then simply subtracted out the imports. Do that for every row. Okay? Once you've done this part, guys, you're basically at the interpretation part. So I kind of walk you through this here. Let's take a look at this first row. Which is greater, income or aggregate expenditure? Well, I know income is 300. Aggregate expenditure is 388. So the way that we interpret that, guys, is that people, people want to spend more in total than the available amount of output. Okay, so what's going to happen is that firms who produce a certain amount of inventory every year, remember inventory are goods that have been produced but not yet sold, there's going to be a rapid decrease in those inventory. Think about it this way. If spending is so high that it's more than you're producing, goods are going to fly off the shelves. So inventories are going to decrease the unsold portion of the goods is going to rapidly decrease. It's going to draw down. Think about how, as a business owner, you would respond to that. 
If the products are flying off your shelf, your inventory has been depleted because spending is really high, you're going to go ahead and produce more. That's going to lead to an expansion, guys. So in this whole model, an increase in spending above the amount of goods and services that's available is going to cause the output to rise to meet that spending. Okay, so high levels of spending in this approach are going to trigger an economic expansion. Let's take a look at the bottom row. Income is 800. AE is 668. So now the amount of output that's out there is now greater than the amount that people actually want to buy. Okay, that's the spending part. So what's going to happen is those inventories are going to start to rise. The firms are producing the goods, but they're not being sold because aggregate expenditure, that's the spending side of the economy, is simply too low. All right, so again, think about how as a business owner you would respond. You would produce less because your inventories are piling up. And as firms start to cut back on their new production, that's going to trigger a recession by definition because GDP would be declining. So if I put all that logic together and I look at this table, there's only one state of the world where the amount of output, remember we could think of that as output or income, we could use those terms interchangeably. When it's 500, notice how my aggregate expenditure is exactly 500. So at this point, the amount of goods and services that are available, that's the output, is exactly equal to the total amount of goods and services that people want to buy. Remember, AE is the spending side. Okay, So what you have is simply an equilibrium where spending equals output. So the answer then to this one would be 500 because that's where output, which we could also think of as income, is equal to spending, which is the aggregate expenditure. All right, so a table like this and identifying that 500 would be the equilibrium level of GDP is the full answer to this, um, to this model. I'll talk to you all later.